Welcome to Texas Bytes, feed your tech hunger fast. I'm Patrick Norton. If you've been wondering what's bigger than a Samsung Note 4, faster than an iPhone 5S, prettier than an Xperia Z3, and hey, probably packs more memory and a better camera than darn near every other cell phone available, well, you'd probably be thinking about the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Want the 30 second review? All new design, 4.5 and 5.5 inch Retina HD displays, an A8 processor, 802.11 AC Wi Fi, improved eyesight camera, crazy HD video, including 240 frames per second slow motion, a barometer, and iOS 8. Sound good? Got some more time? Let's talk. Anytime you begin a product launch with a line like, This day is an important day in Apple's history, you know the hype machines in Cupertino are set to kill. Though, hey, between the shiny new Apple Watch, not iWatch, the Apple Pay, not iPay payment system, that include some of the biggest names in credit cards and banking, and oh yeah, two new iPhones with all new design, bigger HD displays, a new A8 processor, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, some major updates to the iSight cameras, and hey, iOS 8, you gotta say, it's not all hype. Let's talk specs about those new phones. New shape, continuous seamless design. These are actually the thinnest iPhones ever made. The 6 is 6.9 millimeters, the 6 Plus is 7.1 millimeters thin, and of course, the new A8 processor is the fastest Apple's ever made, and the coolest and the most awesome, though quite frankly, the gaming demos looked pretty freaking awesome. One disappointment, I really wanted a sapphire screen on the new iPhone, but I'll just have to settle with an ion strengthened screen. 4.7 inches on the iPhone 6, 5.5 inches on the 6 Plus. I am stoked that the iPhone is finally getting into Android screen size territory and kind of surprised to see that the 6 Plus is actually going to be larger than Samsung's Note 4. I mean, basically a G3 is pretty similar to the Note 4. This is an iPhone, this is a Note. This is a huge difference in size. The 5.5 inch screen, 1080p, while the 6 gets a screen that's quote, more than 720p. It's 1334 by 750 pixels, which is an eye pleasing 326 pixels per inch. There's a new landscape view for the iPhone 6 Plus that includes the home screen, finally! I am seriously disappointed that it seems to be 6 Plus only and not on all the iOS 8 compatible phones. Apple says the 6 gets faster LTE than the iPhone 5S, more LTE bands than any other smartphone for better roaming around the world, 200 LTE carriers, including all three in China. LTE is nice, but I'm more stoked about 802.11ac being in the phone, up to three times faster than the iPhone 5S, 150 megabits per second, thank goodness. And something interesting, Wi-Fi calling for when cell coverage sucks. It's a good idea, but you know what I really want? A frickin' lightning cable that's running at USB 3.0 or lightning speeds. Is that too much to ask for? I'm a weather geek and I play in the mountains, so I love that the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus have a barometer, but the real prize is the iSight camera in the iPhone 6. Major updates, eight megapixel iSight camera, 1.5 micron pixels, F2.2 aperture, and an all new sensor. Focus pixels, quote, previously found only in professional DSLR cameras determine focus direction and how far to move the lens. The idea is faster and better focus. There's also next-gen local tone mapping, advanced noise reduction, and the end result is that the photos they showed in the presentation looked gorgeous. Of course, professional photographers like National Geographic level are taking many of them, but I gotta say, the macro shot of the butterfly, amazing. Of course, the A8 has a built-in image signal processor. The ISP helps with both shaky hands and low light, which means if you like taking, well, birthday pictures with the candlelight or pictures in a bar, you're good to go. Apple also says they've improved face detection both near and far. There's a cool burst mode that'll detect smiles and blinks to find you the perfect group photo. Optical image stabilization, which again is great for low light. And since Apple likes to be cocky, they say, hey, quote, the iPhone replaced the point and shoot camera. Next up, the video camera. So there's a new Apple design video encoder inside the iPhone 6. Slow-mo at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. Cinematic video stabilization. I'm kind I'm kind of curious to see that one in real life. Quote, continuous autofocus shot on the iPhone 6. Uh, thanks to the focus pixels, focus changes are automatic and almost undetectable. Again, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Apple also took some time with the FaceTime HD camera, the one that faces you when you look at the screen. An all new sensor, F2.2 aperture. They say it lets in over 80% more light. That's gonna make for some nice video. Burst selfies, single shot HDR photos. Pretty amazing. So how much is the new iPhone 6 and 6 Plus gonna cost? There's 16 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte, and 128 gigabyte versions, awesome. The iPhone 6 starts at 199 for 16 gigabytes with a two year contract, then jumps to 299 and 399. The iPhone 6 Plus, the big one, starts at $299 for 16 gigs with a two year contract, then goes to 399 and 499. We're looking at like 650 and 850 off contract with T-Mobile, both are gold, silver, space gray. The iPhone 5S is now starting at $99, the iPhone 5C 
see is free. Getting all excited, got your hand in your credit card. Pre-orders for the iPhone 6s start September 12th. They're supposed to ship September 19th, 2014 in the US, Canada, UK, France, Germany, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan. Of course, the Apple stores will have them too. And iOS 8, free download September 17th, at least for the iPhone 4S, 5, 5C, 5S, iPod Touch, 5th Gen, iPad 2, iPad with Retina Display, iPad Air, iPad Mini, the Mini with the Retina Display. And mostly when you look at the new apps inside of iOS 8, the Health app is good. I really like the idea that families will be able to share applications and content they own. You also get a pretty cool protective keyboard in iOS 8 called QuickType. It's gonna like learn your conversation style and help you answer fast. Uh, the Health app looks really cool. Notification extensive for your favorite apps and a whole bunch more little bits and pieces. Hey, ever wanna learn how to code up your own applications? Check out our sponsor, lynda.com slash techzilla. Get yourself a free week of learning online, programming, photo and video editing, and well, there's thousands of different subjects you can learn at lynda.com slash techzilla. It's a great place to start. Videos you can access online, any place, anytime, at your own pace. Check it out, lynda.com slash techzilla. Oh, and before I forget, one last thing to talk about with the iPhone 6, Apple Pay. Tim Cook says, we've placed a lot of energy into creating an entirely new payment solution. What he means is that Apple wants to replace credit cards with the iPhone. That's why the new iPhone has the NFC technology that Apple's been mocking on Android phones for years. It's pretty simple. You add a card from your iTunes account or take a picture of it in the Apple Pay. Apple says when you add a card to Passbook, its number is never stored or shared to your device or Apple servers. You get your phone by the contactless payment thingy in 220,000 merchant locations and you pay with, quote, the simple touch of your finger using Touch ID. There's a couple good things going on with Apple Pay. I like that each transaction is authorized with a one-time unique number. It makes it harder to skim numbers and scam. The person behind the counter can't see your name, your credit card, or your code. And best of all, Apple's got this working with Visa, MasterCard, American Express, quote, the bank issuers that handle 83% of the credit card purchase volume. That's a pretty good list. I just wish it wasn't watching a week after the privately stored images in iCloud got exposed on the interwebs. Hey. I went there. I also went to town on Amazon, finally bringing instant video to Android devices that aren't called Fire. And of course, if you subscribe at techzilla.com or youtube.com slash techzilla, you'll probably see us have some serious doubts about the first generation of the Apple Watch. Tweet at techzilla, comment down below, and have a great day. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Techzilla Bytes.